And yeah, you see the other contestants, you know, kind of going a little, a little extra. And all I kept thinking was, get that camera time, girl. <laughs> I don't need it because I'm going to get my camera time by blasting on every challenge. So if you need your camera time now because you're not going to make it in the competition, go ahead. One moment that will be immortalized forever is when you have to swallow a chalice of living spiders. We actually have the video here for you right now and let's get your reaction. Okay. They were yes. all over me. I had um, like legs stuck in my teeth. I had to ask for water right after what they said cut because I felt one falling back up my throat. Ew. Oh my God. Gross. It was so fucking gross. But you know what? Spiders must be my good luck because when I thank them for letting me go on to win, that's what they helped me do. What's something you didn't know before going into the competition? And what would you do differently now? I want to do a goddamn thing differently because, because I won. You won. <laughs> right. <laughs> Period. I feel like maybe the drag race tape was more um, constructed to see how you fit into the roles they cast as a competitor. And I feel the Dragula audition was, what kind of artist are you? Wasn't really, what role will you, will you be? I, I feel like the underlining tones of both auditions were different that way. Interesting. Hello, this is Miss Fierce Delicious with Queen Labs Network, and you're watching Drag Financial. Today's guest is a bloody good time. This king has been a fixture of queer nightlife. You can watch him on OTV's Call Me Mother as the newest judge alongside Drag Race alums Peppermint and Crystal. Welcome to the show, Dragula Season 3 winner, Landon Sider. Hello, Landon. How are you doing today? I am great. It is hot as... Can we curse? Yep. Yeah? Okay. I'm great. It is hot as fuck here in LA right now. So it's hot as fuck. <laughs> and we drag. Just for you. How are you? I'm doing amazing. I'm doing better now that I'm talking to you. Thank you. You look amazing. You're small Thank and you're you. tiny. You're little. Okay. You're so little, but you're beautiful. Let's pin me. Make me bigger. Show, her all the, show them all the beauty. Uh, <laughs> what have you been up to since winning Dracula? Living the life, living the beautiful nightmare of being a super monster, uh, traveling the world, um, meeting wonderful fans, uh, enjoying my off time with my beautiful wife and her animals, you know, being gay as fuck, <laughs> the usual. We love to see it. Before getting on Dragula, you already had a cult following. How did you establish yourself before getting on the show? Um, I had a very, very supportive local scene here in Long Beach in Southern California. And I had um, the vision and the goal to be full time. And in order to do that was to get as, onto as many shows and casts as possible. So I challenged myself with con consistently trying new things. Um, trying new styles of drag, trying cosplay, celebrity impersonation, horror, drama, um, uh, cartoon, things like that. And I think just me pushing myself and elevating myself regularly gave myself an opportunity and put me up on platforms, got me into those casts. And um, I was very fortunate Showgirls WeHo back in the day was the fucking place to watch drag. And it was hands down probably one of the biggest opportunities and gave put me in the eye uh, and put me in front of people that maybe wouldn't normally see me and it took me everywhere i was traveling internationally before i was even on dragula you took a part in the streaming event huluween drag extravaganza amongst other notable queens of celebrities how did it feel to be among such notable queer people that was a blast um Filming that was so much fun. Uh, they really took the time to really listen to us and really want to work with us. Um, and, and as beautiful it was being a part of that production and working with so many great people, uh, but I had been performing with 
all of those people regularly beforehand. So it was kind of like a reunion of just all these different types of drags coming together and filming for really long days and over a few over a few days. But um, it was it was wonderful. I was I was honored to be a part of that production. Some drag kings have expressed difficulty in establishing themselves in queer nightlife. Would you agree with that sentiment? Oh, uh, yes. Um, again, I had a wonderfully supportive community around me uh, that saw my potential right away and gave me plenty of opportunities, but I know that that doesn't exist. And even then, I still number one face preconceptions and, and stereotypes about drag kings being boring, um, not putting as much effort, um, not being entertaining. And before I even go on stage, when the still to this day, even after my success, I still hear moans and groans when someone's like, our next entertainer is a drag king. I can hear the expectation of people already not being impressed. They already have this assumption that when I'm going to come out, they're going to be boring or I'm the, I'm the cigarette break. Um, and I'm fucking proud of myself that I prove every single time that that is not the case. But I, I elevated myself out of those assumptions by taking every single thing that I heard against me and checking it off that they can't use it against me. Oh, drag kings don't wear as much makeup. You're wearing more makeup than me. <laughs> uh, drag kings don't do this, don't do that. I just took every possible thing and said, well, I do that, I do that, I do that, I do that. Either you um, just don't like my drag or you're misogynist. Which one is it? It's not all drag kings. And I think any drag king can do that. They just have to work very, very hard. Just like any minority in any circumstance in the world, you you have to work twice or three times as hard to get half as far. And um, I've been working very, very, very hard from the beginning. And the hard work's definitely paid off. Yeah, yeah. You've also worked with drag legends like Chad Michaels, All-Star Season 1 winner. Can you tell me how that experience has molded you into the entertainer you are today? Oh, Chad, um, one of my original inspirations, major inspirations, um, brought me into her cast as the Dream Girls. Um, a Dream Boy, I've been one for many, many years. And working with Chad uh, and working in, in her cast and, and her inviting me into her family like that was a dream come true. One of my bucket lists was to be a dream girl. And to have that level of professionalism and eye for detail, I, I, my whole career is pretty much uh, just copying the trajectory of ideally of Chad Michaels, uh, Raven, Raja, Delta Work, Morgan, everything they do, their style approach um, to their cosplays, to their performances, their eye for detail. It really is um, one of my, my favorite things is working with Chad and we still work together regularly and I just worked with her two nights ago and I went out to perform on stage and I could still see her peeking through the curtain watching me and I could hear her cheering me on behind the curtain. Um, what a wonderful, wonderful person and legendary inspiration for me to personally have in my life. It's been incredible. It's amazing. You went on to win season three of Dragula, becoming the first drag king to win any American televised reality television competition. What did that level of representation mean to you? Oh, it was the world. It was stressful as fuck. I knew going into that that I had this weight on my shoulders of representing an entire community that I don't accurately represent. I can only do me. I cannot even try to do what some of these amazing drag kings do. But um, to not only be recognized and then to win and to have my art celebrated um, to represent a brand like that, it's, it's incredible. I really don't have any words to describe how honored and happy it makes me to um, have that accomplishment and to have it follow me and to know that you know, I'm a, I'm a little bit of an inspiration to a lot of baby kings out there. It's It's been a huge joy. One moment that will be immortalized forever is when you have to swallow a chalice of living spiders. We actually have the video here for you right now, and let's get your reaction. Okay. 
Oh, uh, we were all shooting our bricks because we had no idea what was about to happen. Mini extermination challenge right now. I, we had an idea they were gonna throw something at us, but you're lucky. You may we had no idea what was coming. You may just end up an extra. <sighs> There are 11 compact cases before you. Nine of them are empty. Yeah. <laughs> but one of them <laughs> contains a seven night all expense paid trip to the Equator Resort in the US. The last compact is unlucky and contains a spider. If oh, you're the yes. recipient of this compact, well, we'll get to that later. Ah, uh, the anticipation was killing us. This bitch, <laughs> she went first, uh, and she still picked that one. I went second. I chose the one. I, I chose it. No one chose it for me. That was me. That's on you. Yes, everyone got theirs. Ready. In the compact, I see the spider and my heart drops. Literally, I, my heart dropped into my butthole, I think, because I was like, what am I gonna have to do? This bitch won. All expense paid trip to the uh, theater. Yeah. Shit, I want a trip. Madeline. Yeah. The right one. Uh, the fucking bitch. <laughs> because I can afford my own vacation. Uh, Louisiana so shady, I love it. Yeah. Yourself this week. <laughs> In order to remain in the competition, I was ready. Whatever they were gonna throw at me, I was ready to do it. You were ready to do so. I was fucking ready to go. And once they said, I was so shocked. Like there's no amount of being prepared for something like that. <laughs> and they had no idea what they're gonna look like, how many. And then he comes out with this huge thing, uh, full of live spiders. They had already created their web. They had oh my god web in there. They were all all over it. Like they weren't just like crawling around the bottom. Like they were living in there. <laughs> they created their home. So, ah! Yeah, and I just fucking went for it. I was like, get in my fucking belly, get in my mouth. Before I Crazy. I put them in my mouth though and ate them, I took a moment and I thank them for dying for me. I'm so that kidding. I can go on and win this whole goddamn competition. Oh my god. And then they, they have it all recorded, but obviously they wanted it to be more dramatic than me being like sincerely thanking the spiders for dying for me. But I went for it and they just say, okay, now chug. And they were all over me. I had um, like legs stuck in my teeth. I had to ask for water right after they said cut because I felt one falling back up my throat. Ew, oh my God. Gross. It was so fucking gross. But you know what? Spiders must be my good luck because when I thank them for letting me go on to win, that's what they helped me do. Period. Oh my God. This is why I would not survive a day on Dragula. A lot of people tell me that all the time. Please. Okay. There's um, no way I was going home 10 minutes into being there. There's no way. No way. Sorry about it. No I would have walked out the door. <laughs> no, yeah, a lot of people would. Can you tell us what was going through your mind while preparing for the audition? What were the requirements? Um, I think the requirements are similar still. They were uh, an acting challenge, a um, show us the three tenants of Dragula, of uh, drag already, horror, filth, and glamour, um, how you would interpret that. Interpret that. Um, doing something in public that would be considered embarrassing for most. Um, and then questions in and out of drag, which is just kind of going through your, your story and why you would want to be on Dragula. And I was determined. It was, it's a shitty, it's a shitty audition tape in quality at least, because um, I no longer have the original in the high quality. I only have like grainy, a grainy um, mopped version. Um, but I was proud of it. I was proud of it. It was fun. I had fun filming it. 
especially my uh, my filth portion, which was Donald Trump eating a cheeseburger <laughs> on sitting on the toilet. That was fun to film. I love that. Um, I was just down to have a good time. How many times did you audition? I only auditioned once, uh, but I have been contacted to audition for season one and two. Oh. Um, they had shown interest in having me audition because I had been working with the Belays for years before the TV show. I had been a part of their Dragula uh, pageant live show um, for a couple of years now and just their shows around town. So they had shown interest and I wasn't prepared or ready because my uh, uh, rights had been signed away to another project that never happened. Nothing ever happened to that project, which in Hollywood happens all the time. But um, yeah, so season three came around and I knew that I wanted to audition. How long did it take you to prepare your package for the competition? Well, I think we only had like, like maybe four weeks, maybe five weeks um, of being able to prepare. And, and then you're constantly getting revisions uh, for the, um, the concepts that they're giving you. So you kind of don't even know until like the last couple days. But I have been preparing pretty much my whole career, uh, teaching myself and learning techniques and things that I can apply um to my drag and i started brushing up on all those things after i submitted my audition i was like i need to start brushing up on all these skills what was the hardest part of preparing for the competition were there any financial strains yes <laughs> um i was very fortunate to be able to borrow some money from from some friends um and from my manager he lent me money too and um i hustled i was tattooing at the time and i um did some artist artistic swaps where i did some tattoos for some people and they helped me with some of my um outfits and things like that um so i was very fortunate to have a support all around me um but the stress of just preparing and doing everything and stoning everything and getting everything ready and things having to sit overnight to glue and it, it was no sleep all the way till Brooklyn. <laughs> What's something you didn't know before going into the competition? And what would you do differently now? I want to do a goddamn thing differently because, because I want you that. won. <laughs> right. <laughs> Period. Actually, no, I wouldn't. I, my first look would be different. I'm that first look. I'm not. I'm, I'm probably, we're probably going to get to it. But that first look, I would change that for sure. Um. I didn't know myself as well as I know myself now after that competition and within that competition. I learned, my, I learned about myself a lot. I knew that I was um, leaning into the androgyny a lot more. I'd already been playing with that style of drag for a while, but I really learned who I was being in those intense circumstances. Do you believe your local drag scene affected your access to top designers? I don't know if my local drag scene affected my access because i think as long as you got the money they're willing to give you the garment i mean for the most part um i didn't have i never had enough money to reach out to designers before i was on dragula um i was maybe maxing out at like five or six hundred dollars head to toe per outfit um and now so most of these like head like top designers won't start a garment unless it's around a grand so, I mean, yeah, you can find your friends and you get you get uh, hooked up with them and sometimes they give you deals because of whatever they're working on. But yeah, um, I think I had access to it the whole time. I just didn't have the funds for it. How long have you been doing drag before you auditioned? I have been doing drag for 10 years. How did you get into drag? I had grown up acting and, and drawing and um, kind of always being in the visual and performance art side of things. And then um, in high school, I started playing with makeup. I found Kevin Aquan's books and I started to play with um, special effects stuff and, and just kind of Halloween things. And um, it was a perfect combination of all my love when I was sick for a hot minute and I wanted to get back into theater, but not traditional theater. And I've been going to the drag shows every week for many years. So I figured, well, let me just try that. And here we are. Here we are. Do you feel it's necessary to go into depth in order to prepare for the competition? I don't feel it's necessary to go into depth 
for anyone in a competition. I think it is for some people. I think it's an option some people have no choice but to do. Um, it depends on your experience and what uh, privileges you had beforehand. Um, some people will go on and with like Maxi Glamour, for instance, she uses recycled materials and she didn't go on with any money and neither did, did Saints. But you know, you your art is what your art is and all you can do is represent yourself. And if yourself is not having a lot of money, then work it, bitch, work, work your construction paper. Do what you gotta do, work, work that garbage bag. Make art, just make art. Do you think there's a financial gamble when deciding to go on the competition? There's a huge financial gamble because you're not just spending money to prepare your package, but you're not, you're going away. You're going away from home. You can't work um, for like a, a month and a half, two months, depending on how long it's going to take to film. So you're losing, actively losing money by, by going on a competition show. Um, at least Dragula, when I was on it, they weren't paying anyone to be on it. I know Drag Race pays you now, um, but at the beginning they didn't do that either. So. Yeah, it's a huge gamble. Have you auditioned for Drag Race? And if so, how is the audition process different than from Dragula? I did, I auditioned for Drag Race three times. I think it was seven, eight, and nine, or six, seven, and eight, right in, right in there. Um, it was a lot different. Uh, my, my Drag Race tape ended up being like almost 20 minutes long and each time, um, and my Dragula was, I think it's only like 10 minutes, but I feel like maybe the Drag Race tape was more um, constructed to see how you fit into the roles they cast as a competitor. And I feel the Dragula audition was, what kind of artist are you? Mm -hmm. Wasn't really, what role will you, will you be? I, I feel like, the underlining tones of both auditions were different that way. Interesting. After you auditioned, did you feel that you needed to put on a character for television? And if not, did you feel that any of your other contestants felt the pressure to do so? Uh, yes, like no and yes. Um, I didn't put on a character for television, but I just didn't want to be a part of the drama. I'm not a fan of the drama like the housewives and all that kind of the way they talk and the way they just want to like push all those little buttons and you can tell when it's like the producers are in the ears um i'm not really a fan of that so i wasn't going to give that to them and i think that's why you never really saw me a part of anything but when people are going back and forth you see me go ooh, 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 because like that it's it's funny in the moment but i don't want to be a part of creating that kind of not not fake but fake um and yeah you see the other contestants you know kind of going a little a little extra and all i kept thinking was get that camera time girl <laughs> i don't need it because i'm gonna get my camera time by blasting on every challenge so if you need your camera time now because you're not gonna make it in the competition go ahead be dramatic <laughs> i just knew that i was gonna stay in and do my thing and and be me um maybe a little bit more reserved but I'd rather be reserved than um, fake drama. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with our weekly content. And don't forget to hit the like button and leave us a comment below to let us know who you want to see next. And if you want early or exclusive content, make sure to support us here. Now click here to see the next part of our interview.